Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Today we have got the first in three videos of empties that are coming this week. So today we're starting off with my makeup empties and then I've also got hair care empties and skincare empties. This is going to be a super short video because as you can see, there are not a lot of makeup empties to be discussed here. I haven't been wearing as much makeup during the pandemic. I, th I think a lot of people are the same, so... The knock-on is obviously that I have not been finishing products at the sort of rate that I expected to, but it is what it is, this is what we've got. So we will start off, I have finished a primer and I'm also just going to put it out there that we need to ignore my nails because I haven't actually painted my own nails in years pre-pandemic, so I'm not any good at it, it's, um, it's what I've found out, so let's just... Let's just acknowledge it, they're terrible, let's ignore them and move on. So I finished up this product from number 7 and it's their Skin Illuminator. So I used this kind of both as a primer, which is what I'd initially put it down as, um, and also a liquid highlighter. I did like it, but I really, in terms of a liquid highlighter, I really like the Becca Moonstone liquid highlighter. If I was repurchasing one, that's the one that I'd repurchase. And in terms of primers, because I've got oily skin and not textural issues but pore issues <laughs> um i tend to prefer primers that are a little bit more kind of silicony and more about smoothing over um and kind of creating that canvas for my makeup rather than um illuminating again because i'm oily as well my skin is the the flip side the upside of oily is that my skin has a bit of a glow anyway and i feel like once I put my foundation on and whatever, that does come through whether I want it to or not. Half the time I actually don't want it to. And I get more use out of using like highlighters and things when I want them after I've used my foundation than I do from a primer. So I did like this, but I wouldn't repurchase it. This was worth $4.33. I finished this foundation from MAC. This was their Studio Sculpt Foundation and this was worth $35. I have had this for absolutely ages. I feel like it kind of uh, wasn't great towards the end, but I have had this for so long that it probably was just the case of the formula had actually turned. So I'm glad that it's used up and I'm glad that it's out of my collection, but I wouldn't repurchase it. I also finished up the first corrector. I had two green correctors and two under eye correctors entering this year. So this is the first of the green correctors out and this is the mini size. So I decided to use that up first. Um, and the other one that I've got is the same product but in the full size. So this is the Dr. Jart Cisa Pear Tiger Grass Corrector and this size was worth $18. I didn't love this. I didn't do my research properly. I've kind of spoken about this already. I just wanted a corrector. This is actually one of those things that goes on green and then it kind of turns to a skin tone colour but it is far too dark for my... And it, like I have stupidly pale skin so I imagine this would be absolutely fine. Um, you know, for most people, like I am exceptionally fair, so it's probably fine for most people, but it's too dark for me, which means that although it's got an SPF in it and it kind of is redness neutralizing, I can't use this unless I do want to use makeup over the top of it to fix the color. So I wouldn't repurchase this. Once I finish the other one, I will just go back to my MAC corrector because. That was just a straight up green colour corrector, which means that if I wasn't wearing makeup or whatever, but I wanted to like put a little bit in my nose or something, um, you know, I could go ahead and do that without needing to follow it up with anything else. So for that reason, I wouldn't repurchase this. I finished this from Benefit. This is their Gimme Brow and this size is worth $8 because it's the little trial size. This was fine, but I just prefer a brow pencil and then a clear gel over my brows. I'm not really, like I've never used the boy brow or anything like that. I didn't love this. Like it's fine, I used it up, but it's not what I would choose to use in my eyebrows. So again, would not repurchase this. For mascara, I finished this little mini of the Dior Show. This was worth $11.40 for this size. I quite like this mascara. I've had a few of these minis. I don't know if I'd go out my way to purchase the full size. There are other mascaras that I prefer. Um, but I am kind of at that point with mascara where I feel like I could honestly never buy a mascara because I seem to accumulate these little minis all the time. They're always in gifts with purchases. And, you know, brands are just, they seem to have them to hand out, even if it's not an official gift purchase. If you're buying something, 
I feel like I get given a Moscato along with it half the time. So if I got more of these minis I would finish this up. It's one of those ones that's a really sort of big bristly brush. I do technically prefer more of a sort of plasticky brush. So I'm eking out the last of my NARS Cly Climax Moscato at the moment. Um, and it, the way that I feel at the moment is that that's the one I would repurchase if I was going to repurchase the mascara, wait and I'll get that actually to show you the two wands. So this is my NARS Climax, this isn't a, an empty because it's not it's not done yet but it's, it's nearly done but the wand that's on this it is quite big but it's more plasticky than these big ones usually are. I don't really know if you can kind of see that on camera or not but no you really can't really see that at all. Like it is still a sort of like, if I bring this right up. I don't really know if you can see, but this gives really, the NARS Climax Mascara, it gives really good volume, which is what the Dior Show is really good for doing. But because this is a more plasticky brush, even though it doesn't particularly look like it on the camera, this is really good for separating the lashes. So I feel like I get length and definition and volume from the NARS Climax, whereas I do feel with the Dior Show, although I would absolutely use it up again, um, it gives volume, but it does that thing where it sort of clumps your lashes together and things. So... The way I feel at the moment, the only mascara I would go out my way to repurchase would be NARS Climax. But anyway, detour through the mascara comparison. I've now got mascara on my nail. My badly, oh my god, look how bad that, um, ugh, we can't even talk, let's not talk about it. But yeah, so I finished that and it was worth $11.40 and I wouldn't rush to repurchase it, but I would use it again if it came my way, which it probably will in the future. I finished a lip gloss, so... This was in my first ever project band, which was um, not last year, but the year before. And I made really good progress on it that year, but I never quite finished it. And although I am trying to rotate through my things this year, I knew I was quite close to the end of this. So I took the stopper out and got everything that I could get out of it. So this was the Marc Jacobs lip gloss in the shade Allow Me. It was worth $8 for this size. This was, again, a gift for the purchase. Um, oh no, it wasn't actually. This was a Sephora birthday gift actually, I think is where I got this one. What I'm saying though is that I didn't pick this colour to purchase, um, but I do like this formula and I have actually purchased a full size one of these lip glosses in a different colour since trying this one out. So I do like the formula. It is quite sticky. That's it. It's very much one that when it's on, you know you're wearing a lip gloss and your hair is probably going to get caught in it, but they're so pigmented, these lip glosses. Like, they really, the one that I've got I think is the shade Call Me, it's a sort of gingerbready shade and like if I have that on my lips I don't need a lipstick underneath it, it's not that kind of sheer lip gloss, it's super opaque, super pigmented um, and I really really like that so I do like the glosses but I wouldn't repurchase this shade as such. And lastly I finished two lip balms so the fresh ones obviously a mini of their Advanced Sugar Lip Treatment um, and this was worth $12.13 Oh, throwing it away. Um, and then the Lana Lips was worth $17 and that's a full size one. I did like both of these. I felt with the fresh one it melted so easily um, that particularly by the end the slightest bit of pressure on the lips it was kind of slipping about like the actual um, like the bullet was kind of slipping about so it got quite messy to use towards the end. Now that might be less of an issue if it was a full size rather than a mini. So I wouldn't be put off, I would purchase another one, um, but I don't think that I'd rush out of my way to purchase another one. Um, although having said that, they do have some in Zodiac packaging, which really appeals to me because I don't, uh, I don't necessarily believe in my horoscope as such, like to read it for what will happen each week or anything like that. But I do very much identify with my birth chart and things like that. So I, I'm quite into that kind of side of it, if that makes sense. Um, and I really enjoy like constellations and stars and space when it's used as a design. So the packaging of the Zodiac ones very much appeals to me. So I could I could potentially see myself purchasing the Zodiac one at some point um, based on that packaging. And I do, I like the product enough that I, I would use it up. Um, I would buy it based on that packaging and I would use it up. But other than for the packaging reason, um, there are other lip balms that I would repurchase over another one of the fresh ones and the Lana Lips is one of them. Now this is more of a liquidy one 
um, so it could get slightly messier to use which the fresh one because it was in a stick in theory should have been easier to use or neater to use but that kind of fell apart by the end of it as I said because it was so melty but I did see a huge difference in my lips when I was using this Lana Lips one so I would definitely definitely go back to this. So those are all my empties for makeup for this video. So that is a total of eight products and a total value of $113.86. As I said, I did expect to have used more, obviously global pandemic and working from home, not leaving the house. And when I am leaving the house, I'm wearing a mask. So I'm not kind of going through a product at the same rate because of that. And it is what it is. Nobody could have predicted that. So if I don't use as much makeup as I plan to in the year, and that's the way that the pandemic most affects me like I'm pretty damn lucky. So I'm planning to put this up on Monday and be back on Wednesday with the next instalment which will be either hair care or skincare. I haven't filmed it yet so I don't know which one's coming first. So I will speak to you in that video. Bye!